Okay, so let's start. So today we'll talk about uh, implementing of the Internet of Things data platform, what steps are required for uh, getting the real profit of such investment, and which steps are really tough and uh, that uh, we can see from multiple uh, examples from all over the world from which we can learn how to do it. My name is Albert Lewandowski. Uh, I'm working as the Big Data DevOps Engineer in Getting Data. I'm also the member of the IoT Working Group in the Ministry of Digital Affairs, and I'm also the consultant for multiple startups, uh, mainly from the marketing and industry uh, 4.0 startups. So let's start with simple definition. What is the Internet of Things? Unfortunately or fortunately, it's uh, it's really tough to create the exact definition of the IoT sensors. So we can call it the ever-growing network of smart connected devices, objects, and appliances. And uh, here we need to remember that uh, anything that will gather and transfer data and has access to the internet is the part of the Internet of Things. And it's uh, really necessary to understand that we are before the next revolution in our life because uh, all of us or most of us has the smartphone that uh, is also the, the Internet of Things. And we do more and more stuff remotely. So even from the telemedicine point of view, it's really necessary that we get better and better platforms, hardware, for Internet of Things, because uh, such uh, uh, such telemedicine can become much better for for all of us. And uh, here, here I talk about uh, some examples. Uh, so, uh, so, so what are the main examples of the Internet of Things? So the simplest uh, ones uh, are the temperature and humidity sensors, pressure sensors that we can use uh, in the factories, smoke sensors, uh, accelerometers, gyroscopes, gas sensors. That is really necessary for multiple uh, use cases, especially when we talk about the security, but also when we talk about environmental uh, use cases. So uh, one great uh, project uh, that was uh, that, uh, that was done uh, in, in, the, in Dubai uh, was about uh, validating the amount uh, of, the, of the pollution uh, that, that was uh, taken from the um, oil machines. Uh, when we talk about the Internet of Things, there are also the optical sensors and image sensors. So, uh, for example, when we talk about the CCTV, it's already the IoT. And uh, here we talk uh, about uh, gathering and processing uh, much, much more data in comparison to the temperature or humidity sensors. And it means that we need to take a really different approach. So uh, let's go through some use cases and uh, when can we use the Internet of Things? Because Internet of Things, uh, like the blockchain, machine learning, or big data, some years ago, uh, becomes a really a, a real buzzword. So I saw many projects in which implementations of the IoT failed, not due to the lack of uh, human resources, technical resources, or lack of budget, but uh, due to preparing uh, not correct use cases and uh, choosing not the uh, right problem that IoT can address. So uh, in terms of retail, uh, the most important stuff uh, on which uh, we can work is about smart ordering and payment and also improving the whole uh, supply chain. So for example, uh, we can implement uh, IoT sensors uh, in our warehouses uh, to reduce the time spent by the employees on, on looking for uh, the looking on uh, of the products, or we can also add the next uh, level of the automation, so we can connect it with some robots in our warehouses. And it's also great that we can add some IoT devices uh, to the stores, and then we can check who uh, goes to our store and what kind of promotions we can offer to to him or her. The next uh, 
the, the next sector of which I would like to tell you about is the healthcare. And uh, here I can here we can see uh, great progress during um, the last year, especially in 2020 due to the coronavirus pandemic and all the situations that is related to this. Because at present, uh, a, a, a lot of and a lot of stuff uh, needs to be done remotely. So, for example, when, when somebody is ill and uh, can't go outside of uh, their home, then they can uh, use the IoT devices uh, and send some measurements to their doctor. So it's uh, a great improvement. And it's also great from the company's perspective because they uh, gather really valuable data based uh, on some sensors, and they can also reduce the time spent by, uh, by their doctors, by their employees. Moreover, uh, uh, such devices like the wearables, so for example, smartwatches like the Samsung Galaxy Watch, Apple Watch, uh, or Huawei Watch, and also some uh, different uh, smart bands, or also some smartwatches uh, designed uh, for, for people who do a lot of physical activities. Um, outside, it's also a great source of knowledge for uh, for users to get better understanding what is for health, what else can they do to uh, to to become healthier, healthier. And it's also great for processing data by the companies because we can understand our users much better. We can also create better offers, and we can help them to achieve their goals. Uh, in terms of insurance, uh, here we can uh, see a lot of uh, appliances. So uh, in, in terms of insurance, uh, we can use even the satellite data to, uh, to predict uh, the risk uh, of, of, some, um, of some stuff that needs to be insuranced. And uh, here, uh, the main idea of implementing of the IoT is related to the previous one, so to the healthcare. The next is connected cars, and uh, it will become really important stuff during the next the, the, during the next years. So I suppose that the until 2025, uh, there will be a lot of connected cars. And at present, uh, some companies uh, already announced that their cars are connected, connected to each other, and they can share their information. That is great because um, it it should reduce the traffic jam in the city. And at present, uh, we can see more and more solution, uh, solutions based uh, on the IoT sensors. So uh, the first group of them are based on the cameras, because I suppose when you, when you have the new car, then I suppose that you have camera, camera already installed in your car. So for example, uh, to pre pre predict uh, the accident uh, or to analyze the, and, and, uh, the, the surrounding around your car. And it's uh, also important that in terms of cars, uh, we have the shared mobility and smart navigation. So the navigation can be enhanced by the IoT devices. Uh, there is also a great, uh, a great sector, so the fleet management, uh, in which there, is, uh, there are a lot of uh, use cases about the fleet management. And I remember one of the first uh, example of using the Apache NiFi that was about Gathering, the, gathering data from the tracks and analyzing uh, by using NiFi and Spark which track exceeds the, uh, the, the speed limits. So as you can see, it's uh, already implemented in the big data and Apache world. Uh, the next uh, stuff uh, is about small city and energy market in which uh, IoT uh, became, became uh, the, the, the main component of any new strategy of any new projects. So in terms of smart city, it's mainly about implementing any data platform. So it's uh, it's also the big advantage of the public sector that they don't uh, they don't have uh, in in most cases nothing. So they can start with really great technology, and they don't have any old solutions. While while in terms of energy, it's really it, it will be important for uh, companies who provides uh, renewable uh, an energy because they can, they can analyze how much energy are spent in each sector and how uh, this uh, energy can be spread, uh, can, be, can be shared uh, between uh, different city sectors. Uh, that, that will be really important when we talk about the consumers and prosumers of the electricity. 
Uh, the next uh, sector uh, is about natural resources, uh, especially in the agricult agriculture. It's uh, really interesting uh, how, how much it can it, uh, it can make uh, easier. So uh, managing uh, managing the whole agriculture uh, company and how it can uh, help in providing better quality of products. In terms of mining and oil and gas sectors, uh, both of them are quite similar and uh, it's it's uh, related to the monitoring of the environment and monitoring of the factories. So uh, when we talk also um, about the industry, uh, we need to remember that, that uh, there are a lot of use cases in terms of the industry 4.0, uh, 4, uh, but I have also heard about the industry 5.0, uh, <laughs> because, uh, well, at present, people real, really uh, like big numbers when we talk about something new. So in terms of the industry, uh, we see a great progress in comparison to previous years, uh, especially that at present we can find a lot of useful solutions. So also from the hardware perspective, we can find solutions that, that can meet uh, some requirements, especially from the security point of view. Uh, okay, so let's go to, to the next chapter that will be about database company. Oh. Uh, recording and uh, slider will be short later. Okay, uh, so when we talk about uh, the database company, because it's uh, always the clue to create the whole strategy, not to implement uh, IoT because we would like to, to be uh, trendy and we would like to have the latest uh, technology because it doesn't make sense from the business point of view. From technical, it, it may be, but uh, we need to understand what we would like to achieve and what will be the next steps. So when we talk about the data, database company that we would like to uh, use uh, information that we already have, that we gather uh, from different data sources to analyze our situation and, and to take better business decisions. So the first question is, do you process data? Because it's also uh, important to analyze what we have at present and what else can we improve for our current technology, the technology stack, but it's also important in creating the budget and uh, also for analyzing when uh, what, what will be the return of our investment, because uh, in, in all projects, it's, uh, it's always the most important thing to provide the profit and the benefit for uh, our company or for the service that we provide. Uh, so here you can find some questions. So I think that we'll go through them through the presentation. Okay, so when we talk about the first steps with IoT, uh, we need to understand that there are a lot of uh, types of IoT uh, devices uh, that, uh, well, that is caused by this, that we do not have a uh, better definition to, uh, to describe them. So uh, the first category is about wireless and wired. So it depends on the type of your company because uh, for example, when we, talk, uh, when we talk about the uh, industry, so about the factories, in some cases, uh, people are interested uh, in using the wired solutions. So, uh, and it's also important to uh, define in which conditions uh, our IoT devices will work because uh, most people, as I have heard from uh, a lot of stories from some hardware providers, they do not validate in which conditions uh, the sensor can work. So I mean here about the working in the temperature of uh, nine of for for example ninety uh, Celsius degrees because not all sensors will be available uh, in uh, in working at uh, so, so high temperature or uh, or. Uh, in too low temperature. So it's really important. And when you talk about the network connection, it also depends on the setup. So do we do we need to set, to set it up in our own infrastructure or uh, do we need to set it up, uh, for example, somewhere outside? And uh, then we need to go to the next uh, chapter that is about providing the network connectivity. Because IoT will provide uh, the benefit can can provide the benefit when it has access to the internet. So we can go 
uh, with uh, a lot of different solutions. Uh, the one that is uh, the simplest one is about connecting our edge IoT devices. So for example, we have 10 IoT edge devices that will send uh, information, for example, via uh, lo local Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth to, the, to, to the, our IoT gateway that has access to the internet, for, for example, by using ESIM from some uh, ESIM providers. And then it will send the data or some information to, to the cloud or our central data platform. Uh, we can also uh, implement the uh, SIM card to all of our IoT devices, and we can also um, go with some wired solutions, but it's uh, the option only uh, for the companies who are looking for the solution for industry for, for 4.0. When we talk about uh, the data processing, it's uh, all, it's a really tough topic because we need to anal analyze how frequent uh, do we need to send the data. Uh, and uh, here I can also tell you about the next uh, category of IoT devices. So does it has uh, access uh, to the power source or uh, does it use the battery? Uh, because uh, the frequent the, the frequency of the data uh, of uh, sending the data has also a great impact on, on of the uh, on the battery life so that's, that's nothing shocking uh, but it's also important to analyze uh, how how frequent do we need the data because uh, for example uh, when we have uh, the store and we need to keep uh, low temperature in our warehouses then it would be okay uh, when the sensor will uh, send the updated data for, for example, each 15 minutes, but it needs uh, to send the data and the alert when the temperature will go um, above uh, five Celsius degrees. So uh, we need to remember that uh, if, if, if we want to more frequent send the data, then we will use more power. And the second, uh, the, the second type is uh, about the sensors that, uh, that has uh, all the time access to the power source. And when we talk about the uh, data processing, uh, it's really important to define how we would like to process our data because we can uh, process the data in our, uh, in our central platform. So we send all of our data that are gathered by the sensors to the central data platform that has much greater resources and then we get some information or we can go with the edge IoT that uh, has a much different approach because we process uh, our data in the edge. So one of the great uh, case uh, is uh, about analyzing the video recordings uh, uh, in, in real time and then it can trigger some alerts or sending some information to our, um, uh, cent uh, to our central data platform when some uh, events will happen. And that's also great then that uh, we live in, uh, that, we'll, that we live now and we have such unique opportunity with working such powerful and small devices on the edge. So our central platform will do not have to be uh, so powerful as in comparison to process all the data that, that will be sent. That is also um, quite, uh, quite complex when we talk about sending and making sure that we cover all the data that we should get. And surely uh, types of IoT depends on the, uh, on the sensor types. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really important about, uh, about remember, uh, remembering about the 5G network. That, that is the part of next uh, industry revolution. So uh, when we would like to talk about data analysis, we need to remember about some network limitations because uh, as, as I see in some projects, uh, we, are, we are not able to send gigabytes of video recordings to our central data platform because it doesn't make sense. But on the other hand, when we talk about some older or less powerful devices, it may be also quite difficult to analyze our image. And then we need to go with some workarounds or hacks and well, <laughs> We, we, we can process the video, for example, uh, in many devices and then it's really important to code something in 
in in, in performant in well performed a uh, programming language uh, and uh, we need to remember about uh, uh, about providing the support for multiple data sources because we should enrich our data in one place so here we can talk about our central data platform that we can also call the data lake for some making some historical analysis and creating the reports. Uh, when we talk about data processing, data analytics, we need to remember about the data enrichment. So we have some information, but it they would be uh, it would be much greater when we when we enrich them by some different information. So uh, we need to, we need to also calculate. Uh, how much data we, we, we need to process uh, because it's uh, also quite typical for some technology that are already passwords that uh, people would like to have them because it's cool and they do not validate how much data they need and they can also implement uh, the solutions that are that will not met the requirements of the business and in the iot sector it's uh, it's uh, it's quite usual uh, when you can see, especially in the startup in the startup market, in the in the startup market, in which uh, well, most companies will will tell you that they make the machine learning uh, with huge scale, but well, honestly, they only write some. They they only implement Spark because well, it's uh, widely used, but it doesn't make sense in the use cases. So uh, it's really important to analyze how much data, what kind of uh, applications. Uh, we need to run on this information, and uh, what are the for of uh, what are the business requirements uh, of uh, our data uh, analysis? Uh, how frequent data should be refreshed, and what kind of actions uh, need to, to be triggered by our information? So, uh, when we talk about the IoT data analytics uh, in your company, the first uh, thing is about define the problems uh, in which IoT can help. So. Uh, I honestly, I would say that uh, in a lot of companies, IoT and related to this data analysis can help, but it's really important to find some uh, simple problems that can be that can be solved, because uh, the most important thing about starting journey of IoT uh, is uh, about creating uh, the POC or even the MVP in a really short time to validate, uh, can, it, uh, can it help us in taking better business decision or to automate some process. Uh, and uh, when we talk uh, about the problem, that uh, I, I would say that uh, it's uh, already the most difficult part uh, of, uh, any, of, uh, of any technical project is about defining the problem and which processes can be automated when we talk to the IoT, uh, the main idea behind this is to automate and make our life easier. So especially when we talk about the smart homes, uh, appliances, uh, or, and also in the industry. And what are the targets of our projects? Because, because we need to understand what we would like to achieve and validate uh, these uh, measures to understand uh, in which level we can meet these requirements and uh, how how fast we can we can achieve them. And what do we plan to do in the future? So uh, do we want to extend our platform? Do we want to enrich our data by more and more data sources? Or, or do we need to um, add more features to our edge IoT devices? So here we talk uh, about, uh, uh, about uh, thinking it uh, with some perspectives because uh, Oh, uh, I think it's it will be the best to describe based on the story from one project in which uh, I have participated. Uh, so uh, in which uh, the company has already bought a lot of IoT devices from China and uh, and they gather all the information from these IoT devices and well, it, it works really fine. But the biggest uh, difficulty in this project was uh, that we were not able to update the software on the IoT devices. So that, that, that was uh, caused by this, that uh, the, the, some engineers 
uh, on, the, on the client size, do not validate. Unfortunately, it was only the POC, but it's really important to also uh, create the list of the technical requirements. What, uh, what do we need? Because from the security point of view, it's really, uh, it's really important to have an opportunity to cover all the audit logs and also has the opportunity to update the software. So uh, that's, that's uh, one history and from the, from the startup market. So uh, which type of uh, IoT uh, sh should you use? So uh, the first question is related to the structure of IoT devices. So uh, do you, ca can you use the multiple IoT uh, devices on the edge that will send data to the gateway and then it will send uh, only useful for you information to the cloud, uh, private cloud or and, and, and a different uh, IT infrastructure, or do, or you need only some uh, standalone uh, IoT devices like the CCTV cameras to validate the security in the construction sites, for example. And uh, how do we need to collect the information? And do we really need to send them to the central platform? It's also important to define what kind of in informations can, uh, can be important for, for us. So, okay, let's go to the next part. I think it's much, uh, much more interesting because we'll go through all the components of our data platform. So uh, we start from something like this, that we think that uh, our problem that we would like to solve and we would like to, uh, that we would like to cr create uh, in the code, in the hardware, so in the software and uh, hardware mix is, uh, will be the most difficult challenge. Uh, while in practice, uh, it looks a bit different because we need to remember also about uh, security, testing, reprocessing some data. So for example, in case of failure, uh, and uh, yesterday that was a great example from AWS uh, when the region US East uh, one fell down and some managed services, like for example, the API gateway, uh, AWS S3 or AWS Kinesis uh, had uh, had some issues. So, uh, and I have also the screenshot of the people who wrote on in the Twitter that they can't use doorbell. So the IoT um, because the uh, uh, because one region of the AWS fell down. So uh, it's really important to create the monitoring, the CI/CD, uh, the serving infrastructure, and providing the high availability. But well, we'll talk. So uh, which type of IoT? Uh, as I talked, we need to, to go through three main categories uh, of choosing the right device. So it's about the network, uh, what, what kind of network does it support and what kind of network uh, can we deliver? Because when we talk uh, about the SIM cards, it's quite expensive, but on the other hand, uh, there is nothing better when we, when we need, uh, for, for example, uh, at the IoT devices to our shops, then it's uh, really great that we can send data directly to the cloud. We need also to take a closer look into the security uh, of each IoT devices and also into the performance, because when we need only to gather the data about the air pollution, uh, then we do not, uh, we do not, we will not use a lot of uh, resources. But when we talk about the CCTV and analyzing uh, the video recordings, recordings in real time in, in the edge, then we need to go with uh, some powerful devices. And we need also to calculate the costs of the whole investment and in, in when uh, we will get the return of our investment on or what kind of uh, unique benefits we'll get by using them. And uh, now we go to the next part of building IoT and absolutely my favorite, so providing high availability. So it's really important to create something like this. And uh, in one project, I have heard great question uh, from one of the technical lead uh, by uh, the client side, what if? And here we should create some stories. What if the one region uh, of our infrastructure uh, will stop working or will not, uh, or for example, we will lose the connection to our devices? What if? Because we need to be ready 
uh, for all, all the uh, situations that can happen. And in terms of uh, data analytics platform, it's uh, really important to uh, have the observability of the, our platform. That is That becomes also the buzzword, that is quite funny, but I fully understand why. Uh, and when you talk about the observability, observability uh, it means that we would like to understand what happens under the hood of our platform. So we would like to get the metrics about IoT devices, some physical, how uh, it processes our data and how it governs data. So we have already three, uh, some, some, some basic metrics and we can reach them by governing the metrics taken from our central platform, our data lake or uh, data streaming platform. So then we can enrich this data and we can understand what happens under the hood. Is there any problems or not? Because uh, then we can create, uh, as, as I call it, the clever, clever alert. So we will get alerts uh, not each minute, but we'll get alert only then when something uh, bad will happen in our platform. And also when we talk uh, about the high availability, it's uh, will also go to the, uh, to the choice between the private and public cloud. Because in the public cloud, it's a much wiser uh, option when we are when we do not know how how big <clears throat> IT infrastructure will be in the next months months or years. While the private cloud is a huge investment, so it's uh, so it can be uh, the great choice for big corporations that already have uh, IT infrastructure and the IT, IT team that will take care of this infrastructure. Uh, in terms of the public cloud, uh, it depends on the cloud providers because some of them provide the real multi-regional setup while the different doesn't, but in fact, in, in, in case of most services, especially when we talk about processing data, we need to take care about uh, high availability. Uh, so also the multi-regional setup, that, is, that can be also quite expensive and is uh, really complex when, when we talk about it in comparison to the single, single region and multi-zonal setup. So uh, we have everything in one region, but we have split it into three, four or even uh, six zones uh, in, in the one region. Uh, so uh, it's also important to define some measures that I will talk in next slides. And the last one is about creating the backup and disaster recovery, because we need to know what, uh, and it should be, it, it's also great when we have automated all the scenarios, especially when we talk about the disaster recovery. Uh, so, for example, let's imagine that we lose uh, connection to our, to our uh, IoT devices and we gather data from the IoT gateway. So the IoT gateway is able to keep all of the data for, for example, for about eight hours. And uh, we fix this failure uh, after four hours and then we need to process all the data uh, and to reduce uh, the lateness of our events. So it's really important to have some scripts, some Ansible roles, or uh, some different code uh, to process the missing data. And also to process the data that will uh, go in real time. And when we talk about the security, that uh, that is still, uh, the most difficult part of creating the IoT setups, mm, and uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't hear anyone who would be sure that uh, that their IoT devices will be secured in one hundred of percent. It it can be quite easy when we talk about adding the IoT sensors. Uh, for for example, in the factory, because uh, it's uh, I would say. Uh, our, our building and we can validate everything, uh, but we can uh, but we can implement uh, some stuff to make our IoT devices more secure. So the first uh, the first thing is uh, about creating the audit uh, so is about scrapping the audit logs from our devices and also validating 
uh, the, the the version of the files uh, on on our devices and also version of the software and check if anything uh, was changed so for example during the, the last um uh, the, during during the last uh, three or four hours the next uh, thing is about permission management but it's also difficult uh, in IoT devices, but fortunately we can also encrypt the traffic be between the IoT devices, IoT gateway. Uh, but in fact, when we talk about some really simple sensors, only for gathering information, for example, uh, that's the use case that, that, that was in the POC phase uh, in, in one uh, chain of stores, uh, that uh, and there they have multiple sensors that uh, validate uh, if the oven in the store is opened or closed uh, and uh, is it turned on or turned off and well that's all information that it needs to gather so it was really simple and cheap device so when we talk about something really simple and cheap it's also really difficult to implement all security features that can be uh, found in in more complex and also more expensive devices. So in this case, it uh, it, it was uh, well, it, it was a great adventure to provide a better level of the security, and it was related mainly to the uh, hardware hardening of the devices. So uh, adding more and more plastic <laughs> around the simple sensor uh, to avoid. Mm, an 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 action from from people who who should not who, who are not authorized to access the device. So the next thing is about encrypting the traffic between IoT devices, and we can go uh, with certificate certificates, for example. And uh, you can also find uh, some already prepared solutions by the cloud cloud provi providers, and. Well, it, at, at present, we can find uh, a, lot, a lot of ways and it also depends on our current IT strategy. The last, uh, the last thing that is important about IoT is about updating software and managing our devices from one central place. So we can check if all of our devices are has uh, up-to-date software and that we can add the, con add the change, the configuration directly and well, it will happen. When we talk about the big data services, uh, well, it's uh, it's it's a great story and a great adventure, but we need to remember about multi-services. So that is uh, one of the reasons why uh, you you should even uh, get the help from some companies for, that are specialized in big data, uh, like like we in getting data. So uh, the first thing is about choosing the computing uh, the compute resource uh, that we'll use. So we can go with the public cloud like AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, Alibaba Cloud, or any different provider, or we can use our own in-house IT infrastructure. It's also important to answer the question: Do we Will we use the managed or non-managed services? So one of the example is about installing on your own and maintaining the service for data processing, like the Apache Flink or Apache Spark on Kubernetes, or you can go with the managed services. So uh, in Google Cloud, you can use the uh, Google Dataflow or Dataprods, or uh, in the AWS, uh, you can you can go with AWS Kinesis, and then you do not need to worry about scaling uh, everything, monitoring because you have it uh, out of the box. But in comparison, it's more expensive because well, it's not managed uh, because it's managed by the cloud provider. So it's also important to calculate the costs of using it, and uh, and to what will be what will be more flexible. Uh, solution for our exact use case. And it's also great that uh, at present in the big data world, we have a lot of uh, open source standards. So we can quite easily migrate between uh, different data processing tools or storages. When we talk about the creating the data analysis platform, we need to remember about the storage uh, in which we'll store uh, the historical data or, or uh, processed already, or already processed data about the data ingestion, how we would like to how we would like to gather this data and to which service uh, will take this data and we can find a lot of uh, solutions already 
and there are also some products already delivered uh, by the cloud providers like the uh, cloud uh, Google Cloud IoT Core or Azure, uh, Azure IoT Hub to which we can uh, implement our new data sources. And that that also uh, supports uh, the whole, the, that also supports uh, creating the connection between our platform and devices. And the next, uh, the next uh, things are related to the machine learning and should we implement it? Uh, business intelligence tools, how, uh, what kind of queries and uh, who will run any uh, queries on data and how you'd like to visualize our information. So here we can find uh, some uh, solutions, services that we, that we use. So uh, the most important is uh, surely uh, the Apache Kafka that, that is uh, used for, uh, yeah, for, for providing the event, uh, uh, for sending the data. Uh, the next one is Apache Flink, uh, the, that is great for real-time uh, data streaming. Uh, that that uh, helps a lot of companies in triggering actions in real time. Uh, here we can also find the Apache Spark, uh, that, that is uh, that is the king when, when you talk about the patch batch processing, and also the Kubeflow, that is the ML platform based on the Kubernetes, and also the Apache Ozone, that is the successor to the HDFS. And that is the mix of the object store, like the AWS S3 and HDFS, and that you can uh, install uh, in your uh, in your private cloud. So when we talk about the IT infrastructure, it's all about the costs and uh, should we avoid the vendor log or not? Is it important from the company's perspective or not? Because uh, in, in some cases, uh, some cloud providers really provide the best offer for this company due to some services that they provide. And we need to remember about the monitoring all of our stuff. That's one of my uh, fa favorite chapter in all presentations and in all projects. So analyzing uh, how, our, uh, how our applications uh, are working, do we need to change something? Uh, or how can we, or how we can improve our IT pipelines? So when we talk about the great services for IoT, uh, we need also to start with one simple thought. If we do not have already the IoT in our company, so we need to start with really simple pipelines because uh, implementing the IoT is uh, quite complex and it's not as easy. As going for a cup of tea, so we need to start with some simple pipelines, and uh, that that will be also quite important, and that will uh, that will show us is it is it a great solution, is it a great way for us or not. Uh, and we need also to decide will we process our data in the central platform or in the edge. So the next uh, topic uh, is also uh, really interesting. So it's about choosing the streaming or batch. And uh, in the IoT world, uh, all of our data is, the is mostly the streaming, especially when we talk about more advanced IoT sensors that produces a lot of data. So we can talk about uh, producing uh, thousands of gigabytes uh, per multiple uh, IoT devices uh, in one day. So we need to process them in real time. But when we talk about, uh, about gathering the information about air pollution or amount of gas in the air, then it, it can also go with the patch because uh, we can get the data uh, each 15 minutes. And if everything is okay, then we do not need to trigger any action and we can analyze our historical data one or twice per day. Uh, the next thing is about implementing the machine learning because uh, when we talk about the CCTV, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's great because we even need to, for example, recognize uh, the, the employees in the construction sites and if all security requirements are met or something uh, is uh, not working right. Uh, but when we talk uh, about gathering 
the simplest metrics than going uh, for the machine learning would not be the best way, especially in the first phase of the projects, because uh, it uh, requires, it may require more time and we need to understand if our data are valuable enough to start the machine learning process. When we talk about the observability, we start with monitoring, then we can we have the observability, and it provides uh, the opportunity to analyze and improve our data applications, our infrastructure, or can also uh, be helpful for detecting the bug. Uh, when we talk uh, about the starting the IoT project, we need to answer the following questions. So, do we have in-house skills, and how big team do we need to uh, to, to meet our business targets and uh, and uh, the requirements that were created on the beginning uh, of our planning phase, and how we how to manage our project. Uh, the next thing is related uh, mainly about uh, managing the whole project and managing uh, our IT stuff. Uh, so uh, the first one is about site reliability engineering and DevOps. That is a really great fan when we talk about the IoT platform because everything in our platform should be automated as much as it can. So uh, here you can find one of the greatest definition uh, of our uh, of the target of uh, creating uh, and and the DevOps principles in the team. Uh, here you can you can also find uh, the great image uh, of uh, of the site reliability engineering in practice. And uh, what what are the parts? What are the components of uh, it, and how we should implement it into our project? Uh, when we talk about any platform, it's necessary to define the service level agreements, the service level indicators, and service level objectives. So, how how frequent how frequent uh, our our data platform? Uh, for example, can be unaccessible because, uh, for example, during the upgrade uh, of the versions of the components, or should we uh, create uh, the um, uh, of the running all the time platform that is uh, well uh, in, in in most uh, production environments? Because it's also important to define what kind of uh, infrastructure should we implement and what kind of architecture of the services we should implement into our uh, into our platform. We need also to create some um, uh, estimates. So, for example, that we need to define that the business user can query our uh, data. Oh, or different. I think it, it would be uh, a bit better. So the business users can refresh uh, their um, reports each five minutes and they will get results after one minute. And uh, it's, really, it's really important to define our targets and what we would like to achieve that we can also validate in our monitoring staff. Uh, here you can find uh, some maths uh, about measuring the service risk. That is really important in the IoT sector when we can process a lot of data in real time and any downtime can mean some uh, loss to the company. So that's something that we need to avoid. The next thing is about the CICD pipelines. So how we can automate our deployments to the production to the edge IoT devices or IoT gateways, and how we can test all of our stuff. So, uh, in in most cases, I would say the the best one is the continue is going with the continuous delivery. So we uh, we have the source code, we build it, we test it, and we validate all of our applications in the development and QA environments, and then we trigger. Uh, the upgrade to the production. Surely continuous deployment is great, but in some projects it, it may not be possible to achieve or it may be quite risky and well, we need to avoid the unnecessary risk. So uh, what about the stories uh, from life? So you can find uh, in, our, in, uh, in the Getting Data blog, uh, the short story about uh, the Mamava project. That was uh, about 
and co creating the about adding more uh, data pipelines and creating uh, the monitoring solution for their IoT platform. And uh, the Mamava uh, is the company uh, which found us desired lactation pods, uh, which are private spaces to breastfeed or pump at work. Uh, and well, it's a really interesting startup also from the social point of view. And well, it, it was a pleasure to cooperate with them. Uh, the next one here, here, unfortunately, I can tell you the name of the company uh, was about uh, creating from scratch uh, the IoT data platform. That was uh, mainly about uh, about uh, predictive maintenance, so detecting any failures uh, in the in the uh, factory before some something uh, wrong will happen. And honestly, you can find at present a lot of uh, startups uh, that do similar stuff. And then we uh, go with uh, data streaming. That was, uh, that was that was the crucial advantage of their uh, platform because well it, it was the main difference between them and their competitors. Uh, the next one uh, is about the company from the telecommunication sector uh, that was interested in processing uh, in uh, much faster their uh, IoT data, and we used uh, their private uh, their private clouds the cloud uh, based platform that is also offered to the customers so well it was about uh, it it was kind of the mix of the private and public cloud if uh, if uh, it was available for their customers and it was uh, about moving their uh, current pipelines to the real time data streaming for analyzing information and uh, making decisions much faster also in the automated way and uh, it, it was about aggregating the data sent directly from edge devices. So they uh, use uh, some standalone application for uh, some standalone uh, IoT devices that gather data and send directly um, to, to the uh, central data platform. That was really powerful. And the last example uh, was, uh, uh, was about the data processing on the edge. And uh, the main case is about uh, providing the security or uh, is about uh, yeah, providing the security of the employees in the construction sites. So it was about, uh, well, implementing the machine learning pipelines directly on the edge devices to process uh, the video and detect uh, some, some, some problems or some dangerous situation in the construction sites. And uh, and uh, then send uh, the reports to the data lake to analyze them later, or to check if our algorithm works uh, as expected. And surely the whole uh, the the whole stuff related to the learning of the algorithm has uh, happened in the public cloud managed services. And uh, you can also find the white paper uh, about implementing the uh, industrial. IoT into, into your companies, into your products, in, in, into to solve the problems that you have and you would like to solve by using data analytics, and uh, you can you can find it in our website and also in our social media channels. So I think it's time for Q and A session. And well, yeah, the time is quite good, so I think that uh, we can go through some questions if there are any. Okay, as I don't see any questions, I think that we can finish uh, our webinar. So thank you for your, for your attention. And in case of having any questions, do not hesitate to contact me or uh, the getting data and well, I think that we can solve uh, any problem in the uh, related to the big data and machine learning. So thank you once again, have a great evening. Bye-bye.